Hey folks, Hutch here with Freedom in a Can. You know, integrating an inverter charger into your RV's electrical system can be a really intimidating project. So while installing this 3000 watt Renogy inverter charger into our friend's travel trailer, we kind of had to work out how to keep the DC electrical run between the battery and the inverter charger really short, but still connect the AC output to the RV's control box. So this Renogy 3000 watt inverter charger went into a 2021 Wolf Pup travel trailer and we didn't have to spend a huge fortune on any DC cabling. So let's check it out. The DC system is wired with the old battery on the trailer tongue. The positive and negative battery wires connect to a positive bus bar and common ground underneath the trailer at the forward floor beam. The positive DC cable runs halfway back along the driver side trailer frame until it meets up with the DC wire which is connected to the control panel at the rear of the trailer. Both wires then cross to the passenger side along the underbelly of the trailer where they then come up into the kitchen cabinet and connect to a battery disconnect switch. Now since the new battery has an easy to reach on and off button, we no longer need this disconnect switch for safety reasons. To disconnect the old battery, we simply remove the battery cables from the terminals then disconnected the old cables from the positive bus bar and common ground, being certain to leave all the other wires and grounds installed as we found them. So we started with the inverter charger on the floor, but as we looked at the specs, we realized we needed a lot more space to ventilate this guy. So we built these supports to give ourselves enough space from the wall, um, on top, and then from the floor. And the reason that we did that is that there's a, a cooling fan in here. This thing gives off a lot of heat, so the cooling fan needs space to breathe. With um, the DC battery wires, as well as some of the other trailer wires coming into the existing hole, we're going to need some more room for cables in and out of the solar cabinet. So it's hole drilled in time. Then you'll need to ground the inverter to a common ground on the trailer chassis. Here we've taken advantage of an existing metal bolt through the frame. You'll notice that we also use the same place to ground the DC negative terminal, which will connect to the system combiner box terminals later on. The AC terminals have individual wire terminals for ground, live, and neutral where you will insert the bare, black, and white wires of the AC input wire respectively. And this is the same for the output wire. Using a utility knife, expose the wires from the insulation and strip the end of the wires to make a good connection into the terminals. Insert the wire through the cable entry housing and secure each wire into its proper set of terminals. Terminal levers are quite stiff and do require a bit of force to open and close. And secure each wire into its proper terminals. Once everything is securely connected, reinstall the access panels and move on. We have the power to the trailer completely undone. We unhooked our battery, so there's no power going to the trailer. What we're about to do is to get into here, into our control panel, and hook up our inverter charger to our trailer's electrical system. We have our AC side, which is this half, and we have our DC side, which is this half. Now this half might look familiar. It might look like a breaker box that you have in your house. And this side, if you have worked on cars or anything like that, it looks like a fuse panel. So 
put this orange cord here. This is our shore power that brings power into this control panel. We're gonna be cutting this orange wire and we're gonna be including our inverter charger. We're gonna be using electrical junction boxes to do that. There are a number of different ways to wire this, but let's walk you through what we did. We cut the shore power wire, then using a junction box, we connected it to the inverter charger input wire that we pulled along the trailer underbelly. Follow the black taped wire. This wire is connected to the inverter charger input, which is the black input terminal on the inverter charger. The output wire leads from the white output terminal on the inverter charger back along the underbelly of the trailer. Follow the white taped wire, which connects to the control panel through another junction box and completes the loop from the shore power to the inverter charger and back to the control panel. By doing it this way, we didn't have to rewire the master breaker. Okay, let's pause for a quick summary of the project so far. With this installation, we can now run our AC loads, outlets, appliances, etc., both when the trailer is plugged into shore power and when it's off grid and out in the middle of nowhere. When the trailer is plugged into the shore power, the inverter charger is taking some of that power and charging the battery as well as running any DC loads. When off grid, the inverter charger is running the AC loads with the power stored in the battery, and those DC loads are just coming directly off of the battery. So the inverter charger is now wired in between the shore power input and the trailer control panel. Now the main reasons that we did it this way was to keep that inverter charger closer to the battery for efficiency and a shorter DC cable run. This both minimizes transmission loss and is less expensive. Using 12 AWG Romex wire, just like you'd use in your house, is perfect to connect the AC 120 volt runs between the inverter charger and the control panel because it's much less expensive. It isn't affected by transmission loss and we could easily run it along the trailer frame and not have to mess with any of that internal wiring in the walls of the trailer. The two junction boxes help us make those connections more secure so when the trailer is bouncing down the road, everything stays solid. To see how we installed the other components, including the battery and charge controllers, see the full installation video in the description below. Now let's get back to Erin as she explains how the inverter charger handles this on-grid, off-grid situation. So the inverter comes with something called an automatic transfer switch. And what that means is that it automatically knows when we're plugged into shore power. So when we're plugged into shore power, it takes that energy and it powers the trailer. But it also knows if we're off-grid. And if we're off-grid, it pulls from the battery. And there's nothing we need to do to make that happen. It just knows. When you're plugged into shore power, a converter takes that AC power and it changes it to DC power and it charges your battery. Well, we have the lovely inverter charger, which is doing that job. So we no longer need this converter. So our next step is to disconnect this because it's obsolete. And there you have it, 3000 watt inverter charger installed in a modern travel trailer. Now be sure to check out this video where we install a 2000 watt inverter charger into a school bus conversion. Folks, if you want to save money on Renogy products, you can use our promo code CANLIFE, which is linked in the description below. Be sure to give us a follow and like this video, and we'll see you on the road.